everyone, and welcome to another episode of Out of the Fog. I'm your host, Laura Beltonba. For tonight's episode, we get to sit down and have a wonderful conversation with Catherine Taylor Mousseau, host of Let's Get Writing on Rogers TV and new published author of Misty's Misadventures. So sit back and relax and take a dive in with us today. You're watching Rogers TV St. John's. Get any bigger than this. You just can't wait for the puck to drop. Ready for the Stanley Cup playoffs on Sportsnet? Yeah, oh yeah. Here we go. The chase for hockey's greatest prize. It's a whole different game. I really think that anyone's got a chance. Top level talent bringing big time excitement. Everybody's in your team in playoffs. Anything can happen. I just want to win the Stanley Cup so bad. Until you reach the biggest moment of all. Stanley Cup champion. The most amazing and magical time of the year. This is big. The Stanley Cup playoffs. Sportsnet. You're watching Rogers TV, St. John's. Welcome back, everyone. I'm now joined on the couch by the effervescent Catherine Taylor Musso, author of Misty's Misadventures. Catherine, thank you for joining us today. <laughs> Hi, Laura Bell. It's my pleasure to be here. So before we dive into this amazing book, do you mind letting our viewers know a little bit about who you were and how this all started? Of course. You know, I've been a volunteer with Rogers TV in central Newfoundland for a number of years, right up to COVID, and now I share my show, Let's Get Writing, with Rogers TV. But my passion in my life has always been writing and words have always been my tools in anything that I've done, any of my work. And I always wanted to write a book. We traveled a lot and I thought, what's the one thing I can do while well, I'm always uprooted? I thought, I can write, I can write a book. And that's sort of how it started. Okay. And uh, eventually, it took a while, I'll tell you that because um, writing a book was something I had to learn a lot about and it felt intimidating. Okay. I think writing planning for the next one feels a bit intimidating, but with one down, it's like having a grounding okay. underneath you. So you started writing because one, you've always wanted to write and then you were inspired to write Misty's Misadventures by what exactly? What was that spark? Well, that spark was pretty easy. When I started the idea of writing, I read something that said, write about what you know, write about what you care about. And I had relocated back to Newfoundland. Okay. And that feeling of moving back, I'm going to say home, really resonated with me. The feelings of coming back, how I felt about the culture and the funny things that happened. I think for two years straight, I laughed. I really did with the people that I met who came into um, our office and the stories they told. So that's what brought me to Misty's Misadventures. So I started to draw on the things I knew, such as writing, which is a part of it. She ends up writing a column. Oh, wow. And she ends up, of course, moving back to Newfoundland. Actually, someone asked me, uh, uh, how much of it is autobiographical? Really, it's not autobiographical, but it's things I know. Yes. Uh, one of my key characters is a dentist. I know dentistry. I happen, <laughs> I happen to marry one. So things like, and I have two girls. Yes, I drew on those things because some experience Experiences are similar, but it's a work of fiction. Okay, so we'll <laughs> Let's see. Be clear. Okay, so we're <laughs> saying it's a work of fiction. So you've written this book, and I know there's a lot more to the story of Misty's Misadventures. So what do you have coming up next? With what are your hopes and dreams for when it comes to this book? Well, when I wrote the book, and I'm a visual thinker, so I see things. So as I write, I could see her in Charlie's Cove. I could see the characters, you know, in their settings. And I thought, I, I would love to see this as a series or a film. I really think that it could work that way. So I've had that vision in my mind from the beginning. Whether I'll get there, well, time will tell. But that is the vision that I have for the book. And it was fun doing it. I've always loved television. That's where I started out a long time ago. and. Gee, wouldn't that be fun? Why that, not? Would, that would be cool. So I know you mentioned a film, so I know we have a trailer. We do. Chance. I thought, I, again, it comes back to that idea of wanting to see my book before my eyes. And what I did, I had this idea of doing a trailer, and Roger Monder of Up Sky Down Films came on board to produce it. 
And then I said, well, how do I do this? Of course I could write it, I wrote it. And then I called up on friends in our community who have been so active in the drama club and I thought, why not? Let's tap the talent that we have in central Newfoundland. We had so much fun. We went to Pleasant View, which is a small community close to Point Leamington. And we had rain, 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 rain. And the day of our shoot, the sun shone. That's all I can say. The film it gods, was predestined. The film <laughs> gods were definitely on our side that day. So we're going to cut and let our viewers see a little bit of this trailer. And then right. we'll be right back. Mm. I want to go Misty Muldoon's favorite view of Newfoundland was always the one in her rearview mirror. Coming home wasn't in her plan. Oh, good morning. Nice smile this morning, isn't it? Uh, hi. Do you know where Charlie Cuthbertson lives? Oh, uh, well, no. That, that a bit of graveyard. Back that way. Uh, um... uh Oh, you, you're looking to get the house, eh? Ah, uh, tell you what. I'll, I'll, I'll take you to it, okay, missus? Uh, I'll be Duff Murphy. Who be you? I'm Misty Muldoon. This is it? Oh, yeah, well, this is just a, a fixer-upper, you know. No, Charlie didn't. Didn't take too kindly, but parting with his money. <laughs> no, but I'll have to. I need a job. Oh, you'll get a J-O-B. <laughs> Three months ago, her idea of a necessity was an underwire bra and a glass of wine. Now, it's putting logs in the wood stove and finding a job. Where's the furnace? That's it. You're joking. Nope. Well, listen, they've been, uh, Debbie's, uh, Debbie's hiring over at the yard. The yard? What's that, a knitting store? No, boy. No, it's a local newspaper. Jeezly rag, really. Good for nothing, huh? Look at this. So you're what blew into Charlie's Cove. Visty Muldoon, and you're looking for a job. Well, all right, here's your job description. Just one thing, stay out of my way and make sure your columns are on time. What's my pay? Do, do you know what they get paid at the New York Times? Yes. Yeah, well, not that. Now, get out and start nosing around. Hey, I got a J-O-B. My own column, Misty's Misadventures. That's what you think. What you got is a piece of work with a piece of work. With the ink freshly dried on her divorce papers, the last thing Misty needs <laughs> is a man. You're not from here. Welcome to Charlie's Cove. I'm Steve. I'm Misty, like the weather. They should have called you Stormway. You barged here through the door there. I think you'll fit in just great around here. I'll, I'll see you around in sure. a so in a very personal column, desperately longing for love, accidentally goes viral, applications pour in, and papers start selling like hotcakes. What did you do? What did you do? Desperately seeking lover? That was private. I just inked a reality TV show, and, and these just arrived for you. Uh, this one's from Heber Philpott. That couldn't satisfy a goat, let alone a woman. You're making me famous, and you works for me. I didn't sign up to be your retirement plan. Uh, too late for that, hot pants. You're insufferable. Can't believe I work for you. But you do work for me, baby. Don't forget it. But the one man she really wants is not impressed. What's this? Was I not moving fast enough for you? It's not my fault. It's Fon's penny. So what do you expect me to do now? Get in line to be your lover? Well, you could submit your application. I thought I already did. I want to go home to Newfoundland. 
Misty's Misadventures, a tale of romance, misfortune, and the enduring spirit of a woman who won't give up. It will make you laugh out loud and put small town Newfoundland on your bucket list forever. You'll love it. I want to go. So that was an amazing trailer, and I'm now even more excited to read the full book and hopefully see a movie soon. So who was in the cast, and like, what were your favorite places to film? Okay, well, as I said, I called upon the local theater club there and in Grand Falls, Windsor, and uh, playing Misty was Courtney Kelly, and her husband, Dan, came on to be the love interest. Aww. So they already had chemistry, so that's fantastic. Uh, which is really, really cute. And then Duff was played by uh, Dave Anthony. Okay. And I will say his wife, Melinda, was there, like, holding her hands through the whole thing. And then we had Sean Cooper, who is the manager of the uh, Gordon Pinson, Pinson Center for the Arts in Grand Falls, Windsor, and he's been involved in theater uh, for a number of years as well. And he came on as uh, Misty's uh, boss, <laughs> <laughs> Fonz Penny. And, you know, it was hard to think, like, what aspects of the book am I going to pull? How, how am I going to try to create excitement for this story in such a short period of time? And that's long for a trailer. I've got a, quite a long trailer, but I plan to pull other pieces from it. But um, it was so much fun because when I was thinking of who would play what role, I thought about their personalities. I thought about how they would fit together, work together. And uh, I made a last minute switch, I'll tell you. <laughs> I switched Sean and Dave at the last minute. I thought, no, and I think I did the right thing. Absolutely. Um, that was really fun. And then, uh, so they got their scripts, we pulled it together. We had a one day shoot. Oh, wow. Yeah, one day was a, a, a lot to get it in let me tell you and try to find locations so we started the morning in Pleasant View and I have to say um, I really thank my husband too because he showed up with the motor home and he had the coffee he had a washroom for us oh all God. the things you need on on set so it was really fun the sunshine as I told you and we rolled into town and put up a sign and of course we had their permission it's a small beautiful small community and um, it was fun. We had a few waves from people and people who were looking at what we were doing. It was really fun to have that experience. So that was the first bit of shooting and um, even getting someone to allow us to use their ramshackle house. And, <laughs> you know, we had to cut down a few trees to even get to that. Wow. Oh, yeah, there were, there were great moments. We came equipped with everything, saws, hammers, you name it. And, and anyway, that's how it started. Then we pulled back up to Sandy Point, which is east of Bishop's Falls, along the river. And we went actually to Sean's house. Wow. He had a wonderful garage, and we thought, perfect for the office of Fonts Penny. It was just quite eclectic and fun. So we went there, and then the final scenes we did up in Grand Falls, Windsor. So yeah. you got to explore a little bit of back out in Central and get your foots back where basically you started your career filming um, Let's Get Writing. Yes, well, Let's Get Writing is based out of there, and I think people may have seen it on Rogers TV, but they can also see it on my YouTube channel. But let me say that the reason I started that show in the very beginning was to help me with writing a book, because I thought, okay, I want to write a book, don't know how to write a book, what if I talk to people who write books? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll share some information with me, and that's how it started. And I began doing it at the studio, so I had to have people who could actually come and sit down with me. And there are not that many passing through Grand Falls, Windsor all the time, but we did about 12 shows, and I was hooked. I was like, this is wonderful. This is, this is like mining for wonderful ideas and, and uh, information. And so then when COVID hit, obviously everything was shut down. So I said, I'm going to go online. And that's exactly what I did. I set up my YouTube channel um, and I jumped onto Facebook Live. The first shows are quite different from the ones you see today. <laughs> <laughs> You've gotten the experience. Yeah, I tell you, it's, it's, that's the whole point with writing or anything like this. My advice is just start. Just do it. Nothing's going to be perfection in the beginning, and nor was it with writing. It's just if you have something, if you have something on paper or the idea comes out of your head, 
um, you have something to work with and it gets easier and easier that way. And that really was one big piece of advice that I heard from other writers and I applied it to myself. That's fantastic and absolutely amazing. So we've talked a little bit about what your experience has been for writing. So do you mind walking me through that journey from the day you decided I'm writing this book, it's going to happen, to published? What was that adventure? Okay, sure. <laughs> well, it probably started on a plane <laughs> where a lot of my life was lived and flying over somewhere thinking about it. That's probably where it started. And it probably then moved to hotel rooms where I'd be sitting there thinking, okay, I'm going to start writing this. But I think the most important point, apart from the fun, was that I was thinking, what, what? You know, this idea wouldn't leave my mind. Misty, Misty, and Misty, the name came from actually a credit card switch wow. in Toronto one time. And we got home and I was trying to buy something and, and the card was refused. And when I looked at it, the name on it was Misty. And I was like, okay, someone's got my credit card. And yes. whoa, but the name stayed with me. Okay. And the idea of the misadventure came out of, came out of that funny experience. And then when I had the name and I talked to many people, oh, that's a terrible name. And I thought, I don't care. No, that's the name. That's the one that speaks to me. So along the, the journey, you do get a lot of feedback. But how I would do it, I would write, and then the next day I would get up and look at it. And then I would edit, and then I'd write. And eventually I had you know, quite a substantial draft. I had a draft. Yep. I still didn't feel confident or good about it because I just thought, oh, no one's going to want to read this. All those feelings of doubt that can come up, and I think a lot of writers or creatives will feel that at times. So I hired um, someone to help me who was a professional editor. Okay. And um, he went on board and read it, and I thought, okay, well, he didn't tell me it was hopeless. So <laughs> that was a step forward. And then I finished that, and I said, well, if I do have a book, how am I going to publish it? And uh, quite honestly, I researched indie publishing. Okay. And I found a wonderful company. I found several, but I found one called Frisian Press, okay. which is based out in Van Vancouver, but on Vancouver Island in Victoria. And the experience with them was amazing. I, I had an editor. We worked off online platforms. Everything was digital. Um, I worked with illustrators to get the book. It was a wonderful experience. And going through that, they've held my hand, and they even work with me on social media. So it was a complete experience. And now I have the rights to my book. And I can see what I can do with that, as we spoke earlier. Exactly. Maybe it will be a film. I'm secretly, well, not so secretly, hoping it comes out to be a movie <laughs> after I read the book. So you've had this wonderful first-time experience as a first-time author. Is there one pivotal moment that kind of stands out to you where you're like, yep, this is it. This is who I'm meant to be. This is what I want to do. Sure. And that was simply when the books arrived. Okay. And that was before Christmas. And I, there was a, a, just a package that came in, in the mail. And I had no idea what it was. I was at the office. I opened it up. And sure enough, there were five hardcover copies of my book. <laughs> and, and these were kind of the advanced uh, look at the hardcovers. The soft covers hadn't arrived. But when I opened that and I looked at the book and held it in my hands and I thought, wow. You did it. <laughs> you wrote a book. You honestly did it. And it, you know, maybe it's not that amazing. There are books written every day, and you just walk into any bookstore and you see all the books. But the adventure as an author and your first book, I think, will always stay with you. And I heard that so many times from guests. We have a wonderful writing community in Newfoundland and Labrador and so many talented people. And I've gotten to meet them, which was another thing in wanting to, to gain advice. I have met through Let's Get Writing so many authors. And I consider made friends with them. And I feel part of a community, which I didn't feel. At first, I was isolated with this project. Mm -hmm. But the minute I opened up that world, I felt so much better. So I know when we were talking earlier, you did mention that you were working on a second book. Do you mind giving us a little bit of a hint into what's going on there? Oh, of course. Well, once I had Misty, I actually started to write a sequel to that. And um, it kind of starts with one of the weddings she's involved oh. with. <laughs> and yes, so that's in the works. And really, I feel any of those characters, you could offshoot 
and look at their lives. So in the second book, I am going to delve a little more into why certain people are the way they are, such as Duff, maybe, and uh, of course her boss, Fonts. There is a heart in there somewhere. It's just, I just have to dig a bit for it. <laughs> no worries. So if the readers and viewers have any hints of who they would like to see after the second book. They can totally email it or get back in contact yeah, they, with you. they could let me know who they'd like me to feature more because I'd love to do that, yeah. So for our viewers who are listening right now, if you have young, inspiring authors who are sitting there hanging on to your every word, <laughs> what is one thing you would like them to know as they start this journey? Well, is to start it, really to start it, not to keep it in your head and not to overthink it, just to put it on paper and any opportunities to write. I write articles for the Enlo Advisor and those are fun. They're not, they're, they're not creative writing, but they are writing. So any opportunity to write, get your work published, share your work with others, use the, the social media channels to even get going and to find out what other people are doing. But the biggest thing is to get started, get it out of your head and get it on, I say paper, but you know, it's digital on your computer, on your iPad, whatever works. That's the first step. Okay, so everyone out there, get writing, regardless of what it is. <laughs> Let's get writing. That's Let's where that writing. name came from. So for everyone who's watching who now obviously wants to get their hands on Misty's Misadventures, what do they do? Well, I do hope they'll want to get their hands on it. You can go to my web page at katherinetaylor.ca. There are convenient links there to Amazon, Kobo, uh, all the, the major places that you can get it. You can order your book up there and it will be delivered to you. And of course, there are e-versions available. And what's really exciting, I'm working on my audio book right now. Oh. Yes, I'm um, almost halfway through voicing that. And I'm doing it myself because honestly, I'm not sure who could handle some of the characters <laughs> that are in my book and get the accents correct without being overbearing. Yes. But I'm doing that so it will be available later uh, this summer as an audio book. Oh, that's amazing. Mm. So it will be completely accessible to everyone and anyone who wants to take a ride for Misty's Misadventures. Absolutely. And I would really appreciate it if people write, write back to me and, and tell me if they've enjoyed the book or if they'd like to see more of different characters. That feedback is so important to anyone who's writing so that they know people are reading and, and liking what you're writing. So where would our viewers and your readers be able to get in contact with you? Well, I'm on a lot of social media channels. I love Instagram and of course every Friday I go live on Facebook on Katherine Taylor Media. That's when I do my shows with my guests. And I'm also going live as, ne as well now on LinkedIn. Okay. And it's simulcast to YouTube as well. And all of the shows are up on YouTube. Um, in fact, I think there's maybe, oh, 130 shows okay. there on my YouTube channel now with different authors. Okay. So any of those platforms, they can see what I'm doing and they can send me a message. And right off of my webpage, I have a newsletter. They can subscribe and never miss another episode. <laughs> <laughs> that is absolutely amazing. I'm so grateful that you agreed to come and sit down and have a chat with me and talk about Misty's Misadventures. I'm really excited to read and finish the book and my fingers are crossed for the movie. So just in case you needed that extra support, not that we want to see a movie. I'm leaning in there too thank for you. Thank you very much. Like as I said, it means a lot. And thank you so much for your time and sitting down with me. This has been really fun to be on the other side. I know. <laughs> and we'll be right back. It all started when I racked up some serious debt. Interest payments were going up, creditors were calling. Janes and Noseworthy came up with a plan. Knowing that the phone was gonna stop ringing and that I was not in this alone was a huge relief. Bankruptcy or a consumer proposal or whatever help you get is not the end. It's just the beginning. A chance to start again with knowledge and support and people in your corner. Are you ready? Get out of debt. It's okay. Learn more about Leah's story at janesnoseworthy.ca. If you have a comment about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. 
It was so much fun to get a chance to sit down and talk to Katherine Taylor today and find out about her book, Misty's Misadventures. It was also great to get some insight onto her show, Let's Get Writing. So if you want to find out more, you can check her out at katherinetaylor.ca and we'll see you guys next time. about this program, we'd love to hear it. Email or call us or send us your feedback through social media. This is Rogers TV. Calling all journalism students. Omni Television is once again awarding scholarships to qualified students pursuing a career in third language journalism. Canada is a multicultural country and I know that there are a lot of people like me out there. We need the support to do our job in our native language. Omni is home to a variety of locally produced current affairs programs and daily national newscasts, broadcast in six languages. To learn more about Omni scholarships, visit omnitv.ca slash scholarships. I'm a singer-songwriter from Six Nations, and I've been writing songs about my experience. And with that being said, it's helped me hold hope in my heart in following my dreams and being resilient to everyday Indigenous battles. Competition between spirit, earth, and wind, let me tell you now. This song in particular, The Shiner, is a special song that I wrote for my grandfather. He was a snow snake maker, and that is a Haudenosaunee winter sport. It's my job to educate and to share, and the music allows me to do that. He'll be shining snow snakes and mud cats to the end of his days. 